everybody, Snakebite Cortez here, another episode of Photoshop Commandos. Uh, today I was feeling a little patriotic, so I called my homie Chris Cross, who's one of the more amazing artists out there, um, doing comic books and multimedia, transmedia development. This guy, he's, uh, he's the real deal. And uh, Cross and I have uh, collaborated before in the past with uh, great results, so he was... Uh, very responsive to my request and drafted up an awesome Captain America for us. Which is appropriate considering that Captain America Winter Soldier is coming out. I, I must admit I'm kind of uh, you know, uh, looking forward to this this movie. Uh, I really like the Avengers movie. I really like the Captain America first one. That was a lot of fun. The designs were nice. Remember that last one with the Captain America with the weird ears? You don't remember that and maybe you're not as old as me or, or as geeky. Um, so I'm approaching this piece very, very simple. Just uh, a straightforward character color study. Um, Cross always gives me some nice organic shapes and forms. And the guy really knows how to put volume on something. Really, you know, with this demo, I'm going to show you how to do something pretty cool with the minimal effort and the minimal tools necessary uh, from Photoshop. You know, these techniques are easily 20, if not close to 30 years old, um, that I'll be uh, using. Um, and then of course, doing some new school remixing um, to, to fine tune it. But uh, you don't need too many tools. A handful of tools in Photoshop will give you a lot of power. And uh, you really have an opportunity to uh, explore your creativity without getting all caught up in the, uh, what I call the paradox of the infinite choice. And, Photoshop really allows you to get sucked into that paradox world. You can explore all kinds of options and they're all gonna be cool and you just gotta learn when to uh, just finish the piece and be done and move on to something else. So It's a nice exercise for my brothers and sisters in the point and click community. All right, commandos, let's do this. So the first thing we're gonna do is import the artwork, convert it to RGB, drop it into an uh, alpha channel, and uh, turn that alpha channel into a selection. If you're not familiar with this method, you know, go ahead and uh, ask some questions and we can start a conversation. Uh, I'll be more than happy to converse with you, but if you're impatient, just YouTube that shit. Once we turn the line art to selection, I'm gonna, you know, put it on a new layer. I'm gonna fill it with a color. I'm gonna go back down to my background layer and I'm gonna add a background color. And, I'm just going to start with uh, basic colors. Uh, I, I know this isn't going to be my final color, um, but it's definitely a nice color to play with. It's nice to look at. And, you know, who knows? It might lead me in a new direction just by looking at it. So I'm going to start the flatting process, and basically the flatting process is uh, selecting areas of uh, uh, to contain and using the lasso and filling them with flat colors, uh, which will allow me later to come back and select those areas dynamically with the wand. Um, and that will help me in the, the painting process. Uh, the, the flatting process is, is something that I really can't stand. If uh, you've worked in comic books for any amount of time, you feel my pain. If you're a digital colorist, you feel my pain. Um, after hundreds, if not thousands of, of pages, and flatting, uh, not, I don't think I've done thousands. It's, I think I've gotten a, I think I got a flatter before I got into the thousands. And, and, and a flatter is somebody that is pretty much doing what I'm showing you right now for a living because that shit kills you. It really kills you. After a while, by the time you actually get to the artwork to color it, you're so burnt. I mean, at least that's me. I'm speaking from, from, from my lips, you know. You might love it. It might be enthralling to you. You might feel exhilarated and just all inspired afterwards and color up some shit, you know, but I can't stand it. Um, Anyways, it's a very painful process. Um, I'm glad I'm speeding it up because I was, when I was doing this part, I was having flashbacks of uh, ridiculous, arbitrary deadlines and uh, sleepless nights and malnutrition and stress and migraines and uh, um, uh, pissy emails to uh, snarky editors. <laughs> yeah, it went like that. What can I say? Hey, it's called Commandos. I'm giving you tools to survive. So, if you pick up on some stuff that, you know, might be in one direction, you know, stay tuned, there's more of that. Okay, back on point. Flatty, I hate it. Okay, I'm done. Now, it's about to time to explore. Back up that flatting layer, 
and a grayscale channel which will allow you to come back and use that later if you work on an area um, uh, and you want to come back and change it. You don't want to reselect it. This, this thing is going to save you right here, this, this flatting channel. So now I'm able to go all over the place and start pick with variations of colors and uh, hues and saturation levels and darknesses. And yeah, I can really find those right colors. I want to do vintage, you know? It's like I'm starting off looking at this stuff and it looks all vintage, you know? And I'm like, flat, even the flat colors kind of got a vintage vibe to it. Um, even though I know I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna render it. You know, maybe I want to keep it in more subdued, subdued colors. You know, uh, desaturated. That's my flavor anyway. If, if you're familiar with my work, especially my work on the red stuff, it was all about the desaturation. I, that was my signature style. I like, the, I like the, 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 the colors to be able to pop off the page. If everything's saturated, everything's just like ah, fucking color. You know, um, then you will never have a chance to really pull in the audience. You're, you're pushing, you're pushing them out instead of pulling them in. You don't want to push. You want to pull. You don't want to push. You don't want to push the audience out with all your fantastic colors. That that stuff may seem fancy and, and great and everything, but you want to tell a story. Even if you got a, one image of one character, you want to tell a story. You want to take the opportunity, every opportunity that you have as an illustrator or collaborator. In the, artistic storytelling mediums to tell story so take that uh, so I'm going to use some desaturated tones and you know play with some some poppy uh, highlights and high contrast areas to I really want to bring the attention to his face I mean really the costumes dope Chris Cross made an awesome silhouette of the character he looks strong he looks solid he looks grounded you know um, his, his job has been done and it's been done to perfection now my job is not to, is to try to not take away from that but enhance that and so in a, in a character illustration you know the attention is on the face so all my contrast and all my super detail but right now I'm just I want to I want to like create form I want to uh, shape it you know just give it give it volume really give everything a, a dimension so again, what's great about Cross is that he just gives you that kind of volume playground. I mean, you can just totally have fun creating. You know, you know you have the volume. You know you have fun, the, the, the strong fundamental foundation to to play on. You know, and, and any shortcomings will be your own. <laughs> so it's it's nice to work with guys that that raise the bar. So it's all about you know when when I color when I color it's all about starting with the big volume, big shapes. And then working your way down to the highlights and the details and the nuance. So it's all about you know, stacking and, and color and shapes. And and I use the hell out of the smudge brush. I mean that that's been my toy for a number of years now. You know, it's just one of those things that helps me create the energy and, and the style that I'm going for. When I'm done with the smudge brush. And I, I go back over with soft brushes, but in bigger spaces. I'll select the whole leg and I'll blast it with like a gradient or a, 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 a bigger brush that just kind of creates the shadow play. So, you know, again, leading the eye. It's like it's a back and forth thing. It's a back and forth thing. You know, select an area, render it, come back, stare at it, come back, stare at it, shake your fist at it. Um, you know, but basically, you want to make simple selections and uh, simple decisions and uh, not get too carried away. I'm not one of those colors that really likes to get up close, and sometimes that makes me a little sloppy, but you know, I, I, I go for the energy. Um, and that's why you got a flatter, giving us some nice, clean, defined areas that you can go crazy in. But I, I like to color initially far away from the piece and then zoom in to do my final tweaking and, and detail work. But if you get too close and spend too much time on an area that is really not going to be featured in any kind of way where that makes sense, and, and it takes away from the dynamic storytelling of, of comic books too, in my opinion. Um, that's, that's, that style, that's not fundamentals, but uh, you know my personal style says less, and less is more. So when you do more, it really stands out. It's all about tweaking. It's all about tweaking, it's all about reconsidering, it's all about going back and forth, and then you know, asking yourself, what story am I telling? It's therapy, you know, 
straightforward. You know, after I'm done with it, I'm already looking at it going, I would have done some more stuff. I probably had to add a little bit more light intensity. I kind of like the fact that this is the top of the head, his shoulders are lit, and all the focus comes there. But, you know, if I had more time or, or if I gave myself more time or if uh, someone was paying me lots of money to really explore this, I would play some variations. That's what's great about digital. Add some different lighting to it to, to play with the variable. And, uh, you know, that's what Photoshop's all about. And uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, if you want to learn some more, you want to start a conversation down in the message area below, please be my guest. I'm going to do my best to come down and hang with the rest. And that's all true because it rhymes. Uh, let's participate and learn together because I'm still learning this shit too. And it's really, Photoshop Commandos is a collaborative educational experience. And what that means is when you're learning, I'm learning, because chances are you're probably telling me how to do it differently or how I'm doing it wrong. That's how, that's how we grow. That's how we grow together. Let's grow together. So so please participate in the message area. Shoot me a, shoot me a line. Tell me something that you would like to see in a video demo. And uh, maybe I'll do it. I appreciate everybody. Oh, so, so wait, I'm not done. After I did this, see, I've been playing around with my, my Photoshop images because, you know, I'm, I'm working on music videos and of course I'm, I'm, I'm doing this and, and part of doing this is applying Photoshop and what I create in Photoshop and other mediums. So, you know, I've been learning new techniques in Final Cut Pro. It's very similar to Photoshop and I feel like I have an advantage working on Final Cut because I've been working on Photoshop shop for so long uh, my sensibilities complement the intuitive uh, platform that is Final Cut and I'm very excited so when I don't have time to shoot new video I, I play with all these Photoshop files that I have for days that were pretty much set up in an animation sensibility you know I just instinctually did that with all my files I set up everything you know, in, in layers, so it allows me to play pretty dynamically. And uh, so I've been playing around, bringing my Photoshop files into uh, you know Final Cut. And as you can see, I've been doing different stuff from my personal artwork to uh, uh, to to the Red Star, really going off and adding animation and, and movement and, and play and special effects. And these files are you know these files are like 14 years old. It's, it's, it's tripping me out. But I'm having a good time and it's fun. So, with that said, what I did with this piece is made a cool and title card for us, me and Chris Cross. And, and uh, it just looks cool, don't you think? Shit. I mean, that's what you can do. You know, it, it, it takes a little extra time and a little knowledge and application, a new application. But Photoshop was the bridge to that and, and it creates a new dynamic for this kind of stagnant, beautiful, yet stagnant piece of artwork is like now we can remix it even further and put some animation to it. So nothing new, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just showing you what I'm doing and, and uh, what you can do too. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook. Um, don't come to my house. I would hate to call the cops on you. Don't, don't be mean down there. Be nice. Thanks. That sounds bad. Photoshop Commandos, keep it moving. Until next time. Shut up next time and show me some more shit.